Hey everyone, it's Nina. I hope you guys are having a good week. Be sure to say hi. Let me know where you guys are watching from. We're gonna be talking about third trimester checklist. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy all the stuff that we're gonna share. Love to chat with all of you. Hi Haley, thanks for joining. <laughs> so anyway, you guys probably noticed that I am not in our office like I normally am. It looks a little different around me, I know. <sighs> the reason for that is when I entered my third trimester, which was yesterday, I was greeted with some really intense contractions. So they were coming about every two to three minutes and I was freaking out a little bit because I was like, okay, these are, these are a little different. Uh, I had been feeling some Braxton Hicks for a while and well, for a couple days and they would start and stop, but then they were kind of regular. So I was like, hmm, what is this? But then yesterday they were coming with like some abdominal pain. So I went to the hospital yesterday and thank the Lord, I am fine and baby is fine, but they had no idea why I was contracting. Basically, they're like, well, you have no infections, baby looks good, you're hydrated. Um, yeah, the, all the tests we did came out great. So yeah, I think you just have an irritable uterus. <laughs> I was like, of course, perfect. I'm so glad. <laughs> so basically, I've been told to kind of relax and rest as much as possible. So that is why I am not in our office and I'm here at home and chatting with all of you fun people on Facebook Live. So be sure to say hi, let me know how your third trimester is treating you. Mine is definitely freaking me out and saying, okay, Nina, you need to slow down. And that's something that I think we all need to learn, especially before baby gets here because life is about to get crazy. So anyway, if you guys have any tips on how to keep these contractions away because basically anytime I was standing up or walking um, they would start and they would be about two to three minutes apart so yeah we need these to stop we need them to we need this little baby boy to stay put right <laughs> so anyway today since I entered into my third trimester yesterday I shared my third trimester checklist with all of you guys on our site so I had already shared our first trimester checklist and the second trimester, so now that I am in my third, I thought I would share with you our third trimester checklist and hope that you guys enjoy it. So Nicole says, hey, glad all is good. I'm 27 plus four with my second. Congrats, girl. Oh, and you're gonna hear, it says I'm the mother of dragons. You'll hear my little dragon fur babies in the background because I'm at home. <laughs> so it's real life, you know, you know how it goes. So thank you so much, Nicole, and congratulations to you on your second, that's so wonderful, 27 and four. So we're like just a couple days apart because I'm 28 and one. So yes, very exciting. I hope you're not getting these contractions like I am. So hopefully your little one is behaving. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we just posted the link below on our third trimester checklist. So if you guys want to read more about it, you definitely can do that. But I thought I would get started and kind of share some of the things that I'm going to be working on or am already working on uh, during my third trimester to be that much more prepared before baby gets here. So anyway, I thought I would pull this up because I need to make sure I don't forget anything. So in my second trimester checklist, I had listed that a big thing that we need to do is signing up for a childbirth class. So in our third trimester, we definitely need to be attending our childbirth class. So there are so many different classes available, such as Lamaze, Bradley, Hypnobabies, uh, Hypnobirthing, 
you name it. There's there's a ton out there. And I think it's important to kind of do your research and figure out which one is best for you. I'd love to hear which one you guys took and what you thought about it. Um, I am currently going to a Bradley class, my husband and I, and we have really been enjoying it. We just um, did, uh, well, actually yesterday was our, our third week, but of course, I was in the ER um, at that point, so I had to miss it since um, this little boy was just not behaving and having some contractions. So we missed the third week, but uh, yes, so far the class has been great. We've been really enjoying it, learning different things and preparing for, for birth. And um, for Bradley, the Bradley uh, method, it's really all about like the husband coach uh, childbirth. And so Brian is learning all kinds of stuff, I hope, <laughs> to better support me during my labor. So anyway, Nikki says, was put on hospital bed rest at 23 weeks. Oh my goodness, girlfriend. Drink lots, uh, drink tons, I'm sure of water, Ex <laughs> excessive gazillion amounts of water. I've also heard protein shakes help too. Don't know any research on that though. Yes, Nikki, yes, I have literally, so everyone's like, oh Nina, you're just probably dehydrated. No, I am guzzling water. <laughs> I'm like, okay, dehydration can cause preterm labor and some contractions, so I'm trying to guzzle all the all the water I possibly can, and I'm taking a calcium magnesium supplement that can really help with that, and all of the things, anything that I can do. So thank you for the tips, Nikki. Thank you so much. And oh, hospital bed rest at 23 weeks. You are such a trooper. And I hope you and baby are doing well. So anyway, hi, Mindy. I see that you joined. Thanks so much for joining. <laughs> so yes, so right now, like I said, the third trimester, it's really important to go to your childbirth class. So right now I'm already going to mine because it is a 12 week course. However, you know, some of the classes, if you just do a one day or, you know, uh, if you, if it's just a couple of days, I highly recommend that you do the class before 37 weeks because you never know when that little one is going to come kind of like my experience right now. I don't know when this little boy is going to join us. <laughs> so, so yeah, make sure that you do, you take your childbirth class before 37 weeks. So then that way it's still fresh in your mind, it's in your third trimester, um, because if you do it too soon in your pregnancy, Lola, goodness gracious girlfriend. Um, <laughs> sorry, Lola's gonna say hi every now and then whenever she sees someone walk by. Um, yeah, so, so again, you wanna have everything fresh in your mind and good to go, but not if you do it too soon in your uh, pregnancy, a lot of people forget all of the things that they learn. So third trimester, definitely when to do it. So the third trimester, you guys, you should also be hopefully having a baby shower, especially if this is your first one. So yes, I am super excited about my shower. I have a couple that are coming up. Um, I have one that my family is hosting for me in Minnesota, which I am so grateful for. I didn't even expect that. That was just the nicest thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm getting to do that. And then I have one that's coming up with some of my girlfriends. And then I have a little family one. Um, later in the month in August. So most people usually do it at the seven month mark. So it's not too late in your pregnancy where you're super uncomfortable. Cause you know, at that point you just start getting bigger and bigger and you don't feel comfortable sitting at an event and you know, entertaining people and opening all of the gifts and all of that kind of stuff. And you know, trying to feel cute in a dress or whatever you're wearing. <laughs> uh, so most people usually do it two months before their due date. So since I'm due in August, um, mine are in, uh, or since I'm due in October, sorry, I'm due in October, my <laughs> showers are in August. So um, that's when you should just be enjoying your shower during the third trimester and just relaxing and soaking in this time because once your little one is here, it's gonna be all about baby. Everyone is gonna be asking, how's the baby? Oh, can I see the baby? Oh, send me a picture of the baby. 
all of a sudden you are now chopped liver. <laughs> no one cares as much about how mommy's doing, uh, which is so unfortunate. I always am like, hey mama, how are you? How's life? How are you recovering? Et cetera, et cetera. So, um, so yeah, enjoy the time that you're going to be pampered um, at your, your baby shower. So number three, another thing, so I said attend you know, your childbirth class during your third trimester, but you also need to attend if you're not, if you're unfamiliar with newborn care, going to your newborn care class, as well as going to an infant CPR and like an infant first aid CPR class. I think that parents who feel a lot more prepared on how to take care of baby and how to diaper and how to swaddle and things like that, they just feel a lot more prepared for that. Another class that you should be taking in your third trimester is also a breastfeeding class if you plan on breastfeeding your babies. So learning how to get a proper hold and a good latch and asking those questions ahead of time is just getting you that much more prepared. So I highly recommend signing up and taking those classes again before your 37th week because we don't know when baby's gonna show up. So, and I was gonna say, for me personally, I'm really, I even recommend that grandparents or who, whoever is gonna be around the baby a lot, if you're gonna have your in-laws or your parents or siblings or a friend or a nanny or whoever help you with uh, the newborn baby to also attend the newborn CPR class because hopefully you never have to use it, but in, in case that you ever do, everyone is prepared and knows how to handle those kind of scary situations. So hi Roxana, thanks so much for joining girlfriend. <laughs> so, so yeah, I definitely recommend those things that you take them before 37 weeks and yes, obviously during your third trimester so you don't forget anything. So yes, those are things that we're gonna be signing up for. Well, a newborn care class, I don't really need to do that <laughs> and a breastfeeding I don't really need to do that because I help moms but I'm still going to be doing the um, infant CPR class and gonna make sure that my mom comes with me maybe even my uh, mother-in-law so then everyone is on the same page of if this baby boy chokes or something happens we can make sure that that's handled because that can be scary that can be really scary so that peace of mind is just everything so the next thing, number four, is to have, like pack your hospital bags and have them ready with your birth plan. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, at what point in my third trimester, again, you want that packed by 37 weeks, for sure. If not earlier, because, again, baby could show up early, we don't know. As especially if you are high risk, if you have twins or anything like that, Definitely have the, your bags packed even earlier because, and have it even in your car because if you go to a prenatal visit with your doctor or your midwife, they may say, hey, you know, we just looked at this. Maybe your blood pressure is so high through the roof. We have to do a C-section or um, your amniotic fluid is super low. We need to schedule an induction or whatever it is. Baby's breech, baby flipped. I don't know. Um, you want to have all of that prepared and in the car. So if they immediately transfer you for an emergency situation, you just have everything ready to go in your in your car so you don't have to worry about having your husband pack your bag who probably has no idea what to pack <laughs> so having that ready to go will give you that peace of mind roxana says you are the best nina i love that you are in the business of helping others i will definitely be rereading and re-watching all of this when i get pregnant love you love you girlfriend and thank you so much obviously my heart is always has always been uh, helping others and giving information. If I can give a little glimmer of info, encouragement, empowerment, that is, that's what we're doing here. We want to be a great resource for expecting mamas and mommies. So thank you so much for joining Roxanna. Miss you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> so yes, so have your hospital bag ready and also have your birth plan ready. So I think in our second trimester, checklist, I said to have your 
your birth plan all printed out and have it ready to go. Review it with your doctor, review it with your doula, review it with your husband or your partner. Um, those are, that's important. So to have that also ready in your hospital bag or, or birthing center bag or wherever, wherever you're having your baby. So reviewing that and having that ready to go so you can give that to the nurse or whoever is you know, at that location and can support you. So that's important. And I highly recommend bringing several. So print out a couple because, if, you know, if someone loses something or something happens, it's nice to, to have backups on hand. So definitely bring that for sure. So number five, install baby's car seat. Okay, y'all, something that's important to know. 80% of people install the car seat incorrectly. Do you know that? It's kind of a big deal. 80% of people install it incorrectly. So I highly recommend going to a CPST, which is a certified passenger safety technician who can make sure that your car seat is indeed installed correctly because there are so many car seats out there. There's so many ways to install them. So you wanna make sure that it's installed correctly. So my husband and I are gonna go to, there's a local resource here, um, it's called Baby, uh, Baby and Kids First Furniture, and they have some CPSTs on staff, and we're gonna bring both of our cars so we can make sure that both of the bases are installed correctly and everything is good to go. Because again, that peace of mind when you're driving, baby is safe, that's, that's everything. Ooh. My baby just kicked me, yikes. <laughs> Kendra said, that's a great tip for keeping the hospital bag in the car. I am 31 weeks with my second child and I'm freaking out at when he will come since I am high risk. Oh yeah, girl, we hope that baby stays put. Do you have a great list of what to put in your bag? I certainly do and I will comment on your comment with the link of the things that I recommend to bring in your hospital bag for sure. Um, and baby's bag and daddy's bag, yes. So that whole post includes all of that stuff, so you'll be good to go. Um, my first child is eight years old, so it's been a while. Thanks, lovely. Oh my gosh, Kendra, that's so exciting. Eight years, yeah, it's been a little while, so I'm sure it feels like it's all brand new all over again, and congratulations, it's super exciting. And I know that being high risk, you're probably scared, and like, oh, when is this little one gonna come? I'm feeling the same thing after having all of these contractions and now having to kind of be on semi bed rest. So, so yeah, having, having your things in the car ready to go and I will make sure that we comment with the link that provides all of the things that you should probably bring with you uh, in your hospital bag. So it just makes it a little bit easier. And there's a birth, there's a birth plan post that I also wrote. So I'll include that in the comments later too. So thank you so much for joining and hi Brittany, I see that you're joining as well. Thank you so much for logging in. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so we were talking about install baby's car seat. So again, 80% of parents are installing car seats incorrectly in their car. So you definitely wanna make sure that it is installed correctly because if Hopefully you never get in a car accident, but if you do, you know that your baby and you are safe. So that's really important. Hi, Tiffany. I see you're logging in. Hi, hi. So, okay, number six, cook and freeze meals for after your delivery. Okay, I know that you're like, when am I supposed to do that? It's going to be crazy trying to get ready for my baby and I'm working or I'm doing this and that and I get it. Trust me, I totally get it. But if you do have some time to make some freezer meals on the weekends or whatever as you get closer and you're like, oh, what are, I'm antsy, I'm waiting for baby, that's something that I highly recommend. If you really don't have the time and you are just swamped, I do recommend signing up for, it's called Meal Train, mealtrain.com. And it's when you can have your friends bring you food and they can sign up certain days if you pick certain days and times to drop off food for you and your family. It's such a wonderful gift to give new parents, so I definitely recommend that. So check out mealtrain.com if you just are really too busy to cook. I'm gonna see if my mom can help me make a couple dishes for our freezer <laughs> before this, this guy comes. Hopefully not anytime soon, you need to stay put. 
Yes, yes. And I, I think a meal train, if you have, you know, I think that's a really great gift to do for someone uh, for their baby shower. So um, saying, oh, we're gonna start a meal train for you and get all of our friends to bring you food. So that's, that's a really um, great gift. And then that way you don't have to worry about what am I gonna cook for dinner when you should just be resting and taking care of you and baby? So Kendra said, semi bed rest? Question mark, girl, you look better than I do daily and I'm not in bed rest at this time. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Well, Kendra, I had to brush my hair and put on a little bit of makeup because I didn't wanna like scare all of you guys because that would just be, that would be frightful. That would be too much. So, <laughs> but thank you so much. I'm, yeah, having to really just slow it down because my body is telling me I, I need to slow down. So that's what I'm going to do. The things we do for our children. Uh, when I'm running two companies, I'm used to going, going, going. I have to do this and that. But you know what? I can do as much as I can at home. So that's what we're going to do. But Anyway, so yes, that was number six, cook and freeze meals for after delivery so you don't have to worry about what are we gonna eat for dinner? And you need to be having some nutritious meals so if your friends can bring you some, even better. So number seven, start eating six dates daily. Okay, dates. If you don't know what dates are, it's a, it's a fruit <laughs> that you can buy at a grocery store. And mostly you find them dried. It's really hard to find them just like raw. So you can get them on Amazon, you can get them at your grocery store, you can get them at Whole Foods, things like that. And it's recommended to eat six dates daily. And you start it, I, I would recommend start eating them at around, I think it's like 30, 32 or 34 weeks. I wrote a post about it and I wrote like how big the dates should be or how many you know ounces you should be having because there have been some scientific studies that show the benefits of eating dates during your pregnancy, that it can actually help you go into labor at you know the right time so it reduces your chances of being induced. It also reduces the chances of uh, Pitocin because they make your contractions, uh, it makes your labor actually shorter. It reported that women who ate dates had shorter labors compared to the women who didn't. So, girlfriend, I am gonna be eating some dates, that's for sure. Um, hoping that this little one stays put for a while, but at 34 weeks, I'm gonna be munching them, so six, Six dates a day um, during your third trimester. It's gonna help you, it's gonna help baby. Even if it's a placebo effect, I'm gonna do it, why not? <laughs> but if, if there have been some studies showing the benefits, I mean, why not? You gotta do it. So something I, I definitely recommend um, trying out. So number eight, obviously, wash, fold, and put away all of the baby clothes. That's usually the big gift that everyone gives is baby clothes. So, um, so yeah, getting all of that ready. So then you don't have to worry about all of that once your little one is here. Just do all of the wash, put everything away and figure all of that out before, before your little one makes his or her debut. Number, number nine, buy any baby items still needed. So again, you probably did like a baby registry. I know I have one and I put the things that I that I need on there and want. And most people like to buy the fun stuff, you know, like a, a baby swimsuit or, or a bathrobe or, you know, uh, bows or bow ties <laughs> and cute things like that. And they're adorable and so sweet and I am so grateful for all of them. But it's also nice when you like, you know, you need a car seat or you need uh, breastfeeding um, stuff. You need like a boppy or a nursing cover or, you know, just the necessities. So if there's something that you haven't gotten just yet and your showers are over, it's the time, the third trimester is the time to really, you know, get the necessities that you need. So that's the main ones being, you know, like a carrier or, or stroller and a car seat, crib, those things. Um, crib's not even that much of a necessity, but a place for baby to sleep, things like that. So um, that's really important. So hi, Brittany, thanks for joining. <laughs> so uh, Brittany, we're just hanging out, talking about third trimester stuff, and 
I'm just trying not to contract, keeping this baby in here at home. That's why I'm not at the office. <laughs> so we just finished with number uh, nine, buying the baby items that are still necessary and important, the big ones during the third trimester. So number 10, choose your pediatrician. So in the second trimester, it was about interviewing pediatricians because that is important to actually interview, not just pick one, because I know a lot of clients of mine who just picked somebody, and then they realize that maybe their, their pediatrician wasn't as supportive with breastfeeding, or maybe their pediatrician um, doesn't want to do a delayed vaccine schedule, um, or, or whatever it is that your preferences are, and so they decided to, to switch. So rather than having that headache after you have baby, the third trimester is when you should pick and let your your pediatrician know, hey, we're choosing you, you're the one, and they'll let you know what you need to kind of do to set up and reserve um, their time. So next thing, or is that it? No, we have two more. Number 11, organize your support system after having a baby. Okay, y'all, I don't know why, but here in America, we think that... Once you have a baby, all right, bye, good luck, we wish you all the best, I hope it goes well. Hi, Sabrina and Laura, thanks for joining. <laughs> um, and it's really important that we create our own village after we have our babies. Because no, you should not be doing this alone. It's impossible, you just gave birth. Well, it's not impossible, but it's really just not nice. We need to be surrounded by people who are going to help us during this time. It's so important. So making sure in your third trimester that you set up the people around you that is, are going to support you after a baby is essential. Sharon said, what are the small things that are necessary and how many newborn clothes do you think you need since they grow so fast? Oh yeah, newborn. Gosh, girl, Sharon, that kind of depends because some babies I've met, they're like, 11 pounds once they're born and they literally wear newborn clothes for a little bit. So I really recommend, you know, not getting too many newborn clothes um, and keeping all the receipts for newborn clothes <laughs> because if you do have a big baby and they're not, you know, wearing them for that long, they may not you know, need it <laughs> and you and you can just return it for something else. And most of the time, babies should just be skin to skin, just in a diaper on you. So clothes as a, with a newborn size is just not as important. So I don't really recommend a ton of newborn sizes. Um, but I did write a post on registry items and how much to register for and things like that. And it does specify on like certain sizes if you are curious about, um, how many you should be registering for and whatnot. So um, all of the necessary things. Um, you're saying little necessary things. I did write, or I actually did do a video not too long ago about some of the cool new products that we uh, that are coming out or are already out in 2017. So we can share that with you as well. Um, Nessa said, agreed, most of the world has support systems except America. Girlfriend, I agree, definitely. So in, in, we're the only one that gets, you know, maybe 12 weeks of maternity leave, <laughs> if you call it that. Maybe it's unpaid or whatnot. Um, other parts of the world, they get paternity leave, maternity leave, all this kind of stuff. So uh, thank you so much. Absolutely, Sharon. Thank you so much for joining. So, so yeah, I setting up, like I said, Number 11, organizing your support system. So I already know that I have a postpartum doula. My mom said she's gonna be here for a month after my son is born, so she's gonna help me during the daytime. Like I said, I am gonna have a postpartum doula, so I will have some overnight help and daytime help to make sure that I'm doing well, that I'm being taken care of, but also catching up on some sleep. I'm also gonna make sure that I have a lactation consultant ready and on hand if I have any issues with breastfeeding whatsoever, because that's important. And if I do notice I'm having baby blues or postpartum depression or things like that, um, I go and see a, a counselor or a therapist. So I did do a video not too long ago about um, the well mom checklist and, and things that you can do during your pregnancy to avoid 
postpartum depression and baby blues and those kind of things. So having your own mom help is the best, said Nessa. Amen. I am so grateful that my mom's going to be around. And I know that my mother-in-law will help anytime uh, that we that we need it too. So we're very blessed for that. But I know that some families, you know, they live in different states or different countries. So it's really hard to, to have that support. So making sure that you do have a good support system after you have a baby is essential. You have to create your village. So, so important. Number 12, soak in the last few moments of pregnancy. Some of you probably are rolling your eyes and being like, girlfriend, are you kidding me? I'm ready for this baby to be out. I'm ready to meet this baby. I want to see what it looks like. I want to snuggle and kiss and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, this is the last time it's just going to be you and your partner. This is the last time, if you have other children, that it's just you and those children. And creating that moment and just soaking in those baby kicks and just loving loving that baby inside you um, because soon you're going to be hearing those cries in the middle of the night and in the day time, all of that. It's so, so important. Kayla said, enjoy time with husband. Absolutely. Because your relationship is going to change after you have a baby. Most definitely. You're going to have to learn not only to just be husband and wife, but mom and dad and how that fits in your relationship and to really reserve that time for each other and to still make time for each other after baby but to soak in that time while you can right now so yeah enjoy the last last little bit and and soak up all of the attention and people saying oh you look so cute when's baby do or whatever and and get a massage or get your nails done and and pamper yourself because you're growing a human you know it's kind of a big deal so I'm going to be resting as much as I possibly can y'all that was my 12 things that we should be doing during our third trimester. I hope you enjoyed our list. If you have any questions, I'll be sure to check this video later and reply back. So I'd love to chat with more of y'all and we're here on Facebook Live every week, like I said. So we'll be back next week and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It is Thursday and whoop. My little baby says hi. He just kicked me. <laughs> and yes, I will see you next week. Thank you guys so much. Bye.